we're looking at the vzoom 5 megapixel poe security cameras which you can mount indoor or outdoor we're going to set up one camera then two cameras and then we'll set up four cameras first let's take a look in the box so we've got instructions we've got these two templates which will show us where to drill on the wall which is quite handy then we've got wall plugs and screws waterproof cover to hide the join and an allen key to tighten up the camera here we've got cat5 ethernet cable these come all wrapped up which are 18 meters long inside that wire is four twisted pair so eight copper core which can be used to travel data or data and power down this cable here we have the barcode on the bottom which we'll scan when setting up our cameras on the app these cameras have infrared light to see in the dark up to 100 feet has a built-in mic also has a micro sd card slot and the maximum sd card that you can use is a 256 gigabyte which is not included so in this two camera set we have the two cameras two 18 meter ethernet cables two wall plugs and screws with the join covers and instructions here you have a little slot which you can rotate around to have the cable go up down left or right to move this camera around you just twist the back end which will loosen it then we can adjust in many different directions the bracket and the housing of the camera is made of metal and only the black front section is made of plastic these cameras are small but feel like they're made well and as you see once we've set these up the picture quality which we have an option of hd or sd now use the allen key that comes in the pack to tighten up this screw which will also lock the camera in place here's where we store the micro sd card we also have the option to save to the cloud or we can connect these cameras to the mvr box which will have a hard drive in which will save all the footage on there now on the end of each cable the cable splits into three you have a reset button the rj45 ethernet port and on the right side we have the option to add a power lead now here are our three options on how we want to set this up so this is up to us we can either use the mvr box which you'll need to buy but allows us to have up to eight cameras which are poe ports power over ethernet allowing you to just have the ethernet cable which will transfer the data and the power to the camera so you then don't need a separate power cable then we have the second option which is plugging straight into your router with the ethernet cable but the router most probably will not be a poe port it'll only transfer data not power so if you plug straight into your router you need a power cable which will plug into the camera so with option two you have an ethernet cable and a power cable plugging into the camera now option three is using a poe switch they're priced around 30 pounds will be providing our cameras with power and data similar to plugging into the mvr box so we don't need an extra power cable for the camera which is good then we'll patch in another ethernet cable from the poe switch to the router first we're going to take a look at option two which is providing the camera with a power cable which is not included but you'll be using one of these which are priced from anywhere from five pounds to ten pounds or you can even get an extension if you need longer cable Now we're going to look to connect our ethernet cable to the camera to protect the join and keep it waterproof you can use this join cover i'm going to call it which will also help keep the cables together now we have power plugged in the ethernet cable now we're going to plug this straight into our router and as we said most routers won't be a poe port that's why we have the power cable to the camera but it's going to provide the data so we can connect to it on our app you want to see both of these lights on the cable there's no indicator light on the camera itself now let's have a look at installing the app you can open the instructions to this page and with the camera of your phone hover it over the qr code which will take you to the app or you can search the app then we want to look to install it and then just follow through these steps now we're going to look to add a camera make sure you pick 2p2 device allowing us to scan the qr code on the camera and now we have one of the cameras connected to the app and straight away i was getting notifications for the motion detection now i'm going to plug in the second camera and set this one up as well to the app now if you went on auto search it would show you the camera as an ip address but you don't want to pick this option as it'll only let you see the cameras when you're connected to the wi-fi in your house and if you disconnected from the wi-fi in your house you couldn't remotely access these cameras so make sure when setting up you connect to the 2p2 device option out of the three now we're going to connect my two cameras to the poe switch that i bought the reasons are so i don't need power cables to the actual cameras as the ethernet cable will have power going down it also and the second reason is that i only have one ethernet port left on the router so i could only plug in one camera unless i was to unplug one of my other devices which i don't want to do 
So this PoE switch is going to provide PoE power and data to the cameras, which we can connect up to four cameras on this. Here's a little bit of information about how the PoE works, in case you wanted to know a little more. Now we're going to connect the two cameras up to the PoE switch and use an extra Ethernet cable to go from the PoE switch to the router, just using up that one port that we had free. But now we can have both cameras or even up to four cameras, which we're also going to look at that in this video. And as there's no lights on the cameras themselves, you can check the cable to see the indicator lights to make sure it's working. And here you can see me testing them both out and checking for the delay speed. Now if you click on this grid, you can select up to four cameras or eight cameras. Now we're going to set up these cameras, which you can use the plugs and screws. I'm just going to temporarily fix these just for testing. We're going to try these cameras in a couple of different locations where we can check out the picture quality. With the picture quality, you have the option of HD or SD. Now we're looking at the quality in the HD. Now we'll check out the infrared lights for the night vision. First I'll show you the footage on my phone, then I'll show you the footage that's recorded on the app. As we said, these cameras can be used outdoors. They have an IP66 rating, which they're basically saying can be used in snow, rain or wind of temperatures to minus 35 degrees and up to 55 degrees. Here I'll show you switching from HD to SD, different picture quality options that you have and showing you that we've got two cameras set up so far, which you can click on the image and you can also zoom in and out, which does quite a nice job with the detail. These cameras have a 2.8 mm lens and a 95 degree wide view angle which is what I like most about these cameras, allowing you to capture more in your field of view. As my balcony is only narrow, it does a good job in capturing most things in it. Now on the app, you go to the little person icon in the bottom right corner, and then images. This is where my footage is saved from the motion detection or from me pressing the record button on the screen for anything that I wanted to manually record. And on the app, you'll also see a green box around what it's detected movement. And in the settings on the app, you can adjust the sensitivity of the motion detection. Whilst I was playing around with these cameras, the motion detection kept going off, so I actually turned mine off and decided I'd actually touch the record button on the screen and record sections myself. Now to save these to your phone gallery, whilst playing the video, hold the screen and then go down to save. This will then be saved to your phone. So it's taking it from the app onto your phone gallery, which you can then obviously send to friends and wherever else you like. You have the option to save to the cloud, or if you have the MVR box, it will save to the hard drive. Now we're going to have a look at connecting another two cameras to our PoE switch. This is just to show that we can do it and the fact that I had four cameras. And then we'll show you what this looks like. As we said before, make sure when adding the camera, we go on the P2P device and scan the QR code on the camera so we can still access these cameras remotely. With the auto search, you'll only be able to access these cameras when your phone's connected to the same router. So basically being in your house. So make sure it's the P2P device. Now for this footage in the living room, I decide to record in the SD rather than the HD to see what that looks like. Now to mount these cameras to a wall, you want a 5.5 or a 6 mil masonry drill bit where you can then use your plugs and screws. And here you can see some of the settings that you can change. Now we're going to have a quick flick through the manual, just in case you wanted to have a read in any more detail and so that I'm showing you as much as possible. I actually had a few questions myself and contacted their support, which got back to me the next day and it was very helpful and answered a few of my questions when making this video. Thanks for watching. I'll leave links and information in the description below. Leave a comment if you like this camera or let me know what camera you prefer. And let me know if there's any other videos you'd like me to make and I'll see if I can make it happen. Welcome to the channel and I'll see you on the next one.